Classical Hodgkin lymphoma is typically considered a disease of younger people, but there's a second peak later in life uh, where it becomes more uh, prevalent again. And there's no standard of care for patients older than the age of 65. Uh, we know that conventional chemotherapy is more likely to lead to toxicities that uh, lead to reduced treatment intensity and poorer outcomes. Things like bleomycin toxicity or uh, neurologic toxicity, as well as a higher risk of struggling with complications like infection. At the time we designed this clinical trial of pembrolizumab as a monotherapy in older patients who were considered unfit for conventional chemotherapy, pembrolizumab was really newly uh, available. We had new data that it's one of the most potent single agents ever described for classical Hodgkin lymphoma with relapsed and refractory disease. And my colleagues and I wondered whether we could use its qualities, which is that it doesn't have toxicity uh, like chemotherapy and it has a different profile to address this area of need. So we designed a very simple phase one, uh, sorry, very simple phase two clinical trial of pembrolizumab monotherapy in patients older than the age of 60 who were considered by the investigators to be con uh, not eligible for ABVD. Most investigators appreciate the curative intention of chemotherapy and so are very reluctant to offer a non-chemotherapy regimen. Um, and what this meant is that we recruited a very high risk patient group with lots of comorbidities. We allowed patients with an ECOG up to two and uh, we also allowed patients with low risk concomitant other malignancies to participate in the clinical trial. We recruited patients with a median age of 77 we recorded the uh, cumulative uh, index of comorbidity score uh, prospectively as well to characterise those, those, those comorbidities. Patients had almost exclusively advanced stage disease, so these were patients who were not amenable to cure approaches with radiotherapy. And what we saw is that pembrolizumab was well tolerated. We were able to take a population which, where, where half had constitutional symptoms, uh, and reduce performance status and uh, deliver pembrolizumab without major complications. We delivered a median of 10 cycles and patients had a median progression-free survival of, of about 10 months. Uh, and we saw uh, overall survival at two years of 83%, which is quite striking in this very high-risk population. Patients did have toxicities that one would expect from pembrolizumab. We saw quite a high rate of itch. We saw some liver derangement. And we had a few patients stop treatment due to immune-related adverse events. One of the follow-on parts of the study was, was to record what happened to patients um, after progression, whether they went on to subsequent therapies or not. Eight patients went on to subsequent therapies and in all, most all of those cases, they responded well. And the subsequent therapies were very gentle treatments, chlorambucil-based, uh, reflecting the overall frailty of the patient population. What is striking about this study is that patients survived well beyond tr their first tr uh, progression on pembrolizumab. Now, the field has moved since we designed this study and we now recognise that a window approach of giving a PD-1 inhibitor followed by a conventional chemotherapy is probably the optimal curative approach at the moment based on some data here at ICML. Uh, and uh, so this piece of data, I think, is supportive data uh, in a very elderly population that you can begin treatment with pembrolizumab. There'll be some patients who are never fit for even the gentlest of chemotherapies where we can now comment on how those patients will go, which is that uh, they'll manage to receive treatment and have manageable side effects. There were no patient deaths on this study related to treatment. So I think it's an important piece in the puzzle for these older patients at risk.